Computers keep changing the world, but their power and safety is limited by their rigid design. The T2 Tile project works for bigger and safer computing using Living Systems principles. Follow our progress here on T Tuesday Updates. This is the 30th T Tuesday Update. Let's get into it. Last week it was about ETS, our Albuquerque board manufacturer, manufacturing T2 tiles for us. Uh, that was great. Uh, since then, and actually also going back to the prior week uh, that I didn't deal with it then, there is a huge, long, sorry saga of inner tile connectors, uh, which I will tell you about today. Uh, looking forward, uh, it's preparation for this Pioneers Festival that happening will be heading out for for a week uh all part of this uh, sort of busy period this rapids that i mentioned last week uh i did want to mention that uh, in the chat room the gitter uh, chat room uh folks have recently started talking about how to pitch this sort of ideas to new folks and, and what's the sort of best way to uh make it understandable make it interesting draw people in uh, uh i want to participate in that after i get past all the other stuff that i'm uh, is now currently running behind because I was traveling uh, last week through the weekend. Uh, but also, uh, you know, the folks, the new folks that are joining in, uh, uh, the people that have come and found it interesting for one reason, that, for example, you know, just because of the novelty of the computational approach, uh, whatever it may be, uh, if folks would be willing to uh, contribute to that, to, to drop in the chat room if you're already there, speak up, uh, that's that feels incredibly valuable to me. Since, as I've mentioned times before, you know uh, I'm so deep in this stuff, it, it's it's hard to remember where the beginnings can be. Uh, um, and you know, with luck, uh, uh, maybe I'll be able to steal some of the stuff folks are thinking up and use it uh, at this pioneers things coming up. So if you can manage, if you think you might be able to contribute, if you'd be willing to give it a try, to try the chat room, uh, I'll put the link again down at the bottom uh, once more in case, you know, for, for new folks. Okay, so today, uh, well, so it's the... Um, uh, the manufacturing. Uh, I, I have the first tile uh, in hand, actually. Um, here it is. Uh, uh, it's probably can't see it very well, but it, it is uh, running. Uh, um, and uh, uh, it's it's doing its little uh, display thing. Uh, it, it used to be talking to itself all three directions so that I could test the uh, inner tile uh, communications, but uh, that uh, passed that test, so I had unhooked it so that it could connect up with some of the other guys. Uh, um, and, you know, so when I got this thing, uh, you know, I was at ETS a week ago Friday, uh, um, and that got as far as putting the surface mount parts on, still had to add the uh, the through-hole parts, the inner tile connectors, and so forth. So I went over on, I guess, last Monday, I'm not sure, last Tuesday, last Tuesday, I guess, uh, um, and picked up the first finished tile. Uh, this one's called, I uh, couldn't really see it here, this one's called E10. It's going to be the series is ETS, and this is the first one in that series. Uh, uh, it looks like there may be more than 108 tiles in the E series. We shall see. Uh, uh, got the first one home, got it under the microscope, uh, took a look at it. You know, er everything looks really beautiful. Uh, um, Oops, uh, ah, I'm going crazy here. Uh, um, uh, also going very slow, not quite sure why that is. Uh, uh, the light sensor that we <laughs> had such trouble uh, uh, placing when I was hand building these things look good. Uh, uh, the joints look good. Uh, the switches, uh, they were a little dirty, uh, but that was because they were added on afterwards again uh, to avoid uh, uh, getting water inside the switch when the boards were washed using the uh, water-soluble uh, flux, so the, the switches got added on afterwards. Uh, the whole thing uh, heated up nicely, it booted up uh, in the dark, you can see the... Uh, uh, the red uh, grid power and the green uh, tile power lights working and I created the whole thing up in one of our uh, brand new uh, fresh off the 3d printer more or less uh, um, uh, cases yeah. and that did reveal a little bit of an issue uh, that when this uh, screw 
uh, when this screw here, uh, uh, which is closest to the power switch, if I screw this thing all the way down, it in interferes with the operation of the switch. It turns out the switch will still open and close, but it uh, it doesn't click. It doesn't it doesn't have its proper uh, tackle action because it's just a little bit too tight. Uh, um, and once again. Uh, um, and so taking a look at it, it it's really just that the um, uh, it, the solder, I think because, you know, the, the solder paste was on those pads, and so that when it got soldered on later, it was, it was just up a little higher. Uh, uh, and I, I, you know, jeez, uh, I reported that back to uh, uh, Robert Evans, um, and, and it was like, you know, boom, uh, 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 we will take care of it. <laughs> great uh, uh so i'm hoping uh tomorrow or the next day maybe depending on how the timing works uh that i'll get over to ets again and maybe get a, some some more uh, of the finished tiles and we'll see if we could you know perhaps well it's going to be a little tough on the connectors uh but to build a, a ring uh uh get get seven of these guys all going and hooked up together that would be cool uh for next week we'll see all right the very next day, uh, uh, I guess a week uh, a week from uh, tomorrow, uh, uh, the boards were all done, and and Robert wanted to know, you know, <laughs> am I going to be building more? If so, they can keep the machine set up. And I had to say, well, no, uh, uh, it's time to tear it down. We're going to have to be working on this for a long time. Uh, uh, so that's just done. Uh, uh, we have something like I'm not exactly sure. He ran all the boards. That would be 200 boards if if they were all good. Now there's going to there'll be issues. There always are with some of them, but so far so good. All right. So that's the uh, board situation and. Uh, yes, so on the uh, 3D printer uh, that uh, we had been doing uh, cases, we got 180 cases, so I switched over to doing the PD, the power and data intertile connectors, they're called DPs here in this picture, but it's the same thing, it's the ones that are going to connect all of the things within uh, a power zone, and, and we, need, we need a ton of them, so uh, we need uh, 41 per zone, which comes out to 2.16 per time when you work it all out uh, so for 133 which was the original build we needed about 300 but uh, with a, a larger build we need more than 400 of these things so I've been printing them up uh, as, as best I can uh, for a while I had run out of the black the Prusament Galaxy Blacks uh, filament so I was using some gray to do the interzone uh, connectors, not the DPs, but the D the PDs, but the DOs, the data only, they're going to go in between separately powered uh, zones of the grid. Uh, uh, so I did some of those. Uh, eventually, uh, oh yes, and this is the point of all of this, that as I mentioned at the end of the uh, update last week, uh, when I came back from ETS, I had this wonderful thing, watching all the boards get manufactured, uh, uh, there was a, a, a collapse on the uh, printing the PD connectors on the 3D printer. What I didn't mention in the video was that that was not the first one. And in fact, there was this weird thing that it, it was usually seemed to be failing in a specific spot in the layout. You know, there's 18 uh, PD connectors on each print run, and it was, you know, sort of two over and two in from one of the corners that usually seemed to be the one that was failing. Moreover, it's the thing, the bearings, the, the y-axis bearing, the thing that goes in and out towards you, z goes up and down, x goes left and right. Whenever the uh, y-axis was coming toward me, it was kind of making a little sound. When it went the other direction, it was quieter. It makes a little noise, but it, it, this was a thing. And this says, you know, oh, the bearings are failing, something like that. Just what I need. Now, of course, you know, I've been putting a lot of stuff on it, so or around the clock for months. So I, you know, I probably deserve what I get. Uh, I had tried a bunch of things to fix this, and so one thing I did try finally was actually that this this golden sheet that you see uh, is actually double sided, and it's got this uh, this coating on it that's supposed to be good for the things to stick to and then release uh, on both sides. So I flipped the thing over and I tried it again, and uh, actually for some reason somewhere in that attempted. Uh, print run, the bearing got quiet. I don't know exactly why, and I'm sure this is something that's going to come back and bite me later, 
But, uh, um, all right, so these were a couple of other little failures we had, you know, when I was messing around with it, but I hadn't dealt with it. And this is the run that I had uh, at the end of last week. You can't really tell, but this gold uh, uh, build plate uh, uh, is the flip side of the one that we had before. <laughs> and so some combination of having a nice fresh plate that had never been printed on before, plus whatever magic caused the y-axis bearings to stop being loud, which, you know, and I did a little YouTubing to read about linear bearings, and yes, you know, they're, they're, they're almost surely wearing out, or the grease is running low, or something like that. So this is going to come back and bite us again, but so far, so good. All right, so that's the 3D printer. Now, uh, uh, the ITC parts. Uh, um, so, trying to build 450 of the circuit boards, the, these things. We're, we're, we're printing the tops, the tabs for the PDs ourselves, uh, but we want to get the board plus the two connectors that each one joins uh, two T2 tiles together. I had started to set up an order at uh, Seed Studios and was pricing it out. At first I was using the, the Sullins, well, you know, super expensive, domestically sourced uh, connectors that were, you know, costing 68 cents a piece. And the uh, bottom long and short of it was that Seed's quote for the thing, right, and here's the thing from, from DigiKey, the uh, component distributor, 956 available. We'd need 900 because each connector takes two if we're making 450 connectors. Uh, uh, Seed's quote came in really expensive, uh, $1,400 plus for the 450 connectors. That's like more than three bucks each, uh, uh, more than three bucks each, more than three bucks each cost for these things. Uh, I mean, we wonder why, you know, connectors are always so expensive. Well, I still wonder actually. Uh, um, so this again led into the whole thing that you've heard about if you've watched any of these videos in the last few months about trying to find alternate parts instead of the uh, Solens connector. And 4UCon had one in Taiwan. It had the same thing, the same eight and a half inch body height, the same angled polarized rib in the middle, and so forth. Uh, uh, also, this uh, YXCon company uh, in the People's Republic of China had the same thing, same height, and so forth. Had this very confusing ordering uh, part number to come up with. What I wasn't really sure I thought it was f185 12 16 because my best guess was uh, from uh, googling around and finding other places like here here's an uh, uh, f mm, here f185 12 36 right there a and it claims that that's two by 18 positions so, so it's, it kind of implies that it was giving you the the number that you stuck in there was the total number of positions even though the circuit well, said you know the number per row <sighs> Uh, um, after last week's update, Andrew, uh, uh, did some additional research and dug into this. Uh, uh, thank you, <laughs> Andrew, uh, uh, and reported into the chat room that, uh, that my suggestion of thinking I wanted to say 16 for 16 pins total was probably wrong. And I wanted to say 08, meaning the number of positions per row. Uh, uh, and, and he found a bunch of examples and, and so forth, uh, some of which I had found, but some of which I had hadn't. And perhaps one of the most compelling things, I'm not sure where, oh, there it is. Uh, uh, there was one that had an O3 in the part in that corresponding position, and if it was O3, then for the entire uh, position, the entire number of positions, having an odd number of positions makes no sense. So, the Seed Studio order seems way expensive, so I went back to PCBWay, which I was going to try them in any case, uh, uh, but I made the order, and I went with the F185-1208, uh, uh, the uh, positions per row rather than total number of positions. And uh, so they accepted the order. It had two parts. The top part was making the 450 boards, uh, and the bottom part was assembling them. And the first part passed, was ready to go because that was relatively straightforward. The second one was being reviewed, but then not that long later, three, four hours later, it was approved uh, uh, for $517 with five, $297 in parts cost, which was a lot better than what I was getting when I was trying to use the Sullins part. Uh, uh, and, and they quoted it back with the fact that it needed uh, a minimum order quantity of 2,000 pieces and so forth. And this, so the $297 was for buying 
2,000 pieces, even though I only needed 900. Uh, um, and off we were going, right? Uh, uh, so the order is in process, and we're paying for it. They had some pushback, uh, like, you know, where is the pick-and-place file? Which I responded, you know, there's no pick-and-place file because there's no surface mount parts to pick and place, right? And, in fact, that was a... And, and th this is one thing that makes me think that even if, you know, Yolanda Chen is actually a real individual, uh, uh, which, you know, maybe so, maybe not, I don't know. Uh, uh, it also seems to me that, you know, several people at PCB Way behind the scenes may speak as Yolanda Chen because they people sound very different in different circumstances and so forth. And, you know, it's funny because in a way I don't care. I'm, uh, I still am happy to have a single point of contact that is supposed to have sort of a customer relationship to me rather than just nothing or, or things coming from all different directions. Uh, so there is no pick and file. That's ah, okay. They'll fix it and so forth. But that was not the end of it. Uh, oh, the circuit boards, they went through the process. Says they're all done. They've been done for a long time now. But uh, we check the uh, parts, and they say we check the link again. It's two by eight pins, two rows, eight pins per row. But there's only twelve pins where there's sixteen holes in the board. And this was the other point I had worried about. Uh, uh, that these uh, connectors have two sets of plug pins on the end, and unlike the 4UCON data sheet where the 1, 2, 3, 4 pin count started inside the plug pins, apparently the XYCON data sheet started on the plug pins. Yes, indeed, that's what it was. So we didn't want 1208 at all. We would actually need 1210 to have 10 across with two plugged, leaving eight pins piece. Uh, uh, could we change that? Could we requote it? And so forth. I went and did some more Googling, saying, I think it probably needs to be F185-1210, blah, 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 blah. Can we switch to that? They did the same research. They said, yes, indeed, 1210, is that actually okay? Should we go for it? And I was like, you know, oh, yes. And then there was an additional pushback, which is, yes, that's the same part that they had found, but a part of the part would extend beyond the silk screen, the, the actual part on the circuit board, uh, you know, the equivalent of this little box drawn here, except for the inner tile connector, not for the tile. Uh, is it okay that it goes beyond the silk screen? And so my answer was, it's okay if the part goes beyond the silk screen because in fact all these do as long as it doesn't go beyond the edge of the board itself and at this point i was really starting to freak out about you know what are the actual measurements on these things i thought they were sort of standard you get the thing with the thing and the rib they'd all be the same so I went and I got the uh, um, uh, the calipers and and I started measuring my parts. Uh, uh, so the one that I have, I don't know if this is a Sullins uh, or not, but it's something equivalent to it. Twenty five point thirty three millimeters. Uh, so twenty five point four is is an inch, uh, uh, which corresponds to ten positions of a point one inch. Those are point one inch headers, so that should be all right. So my connectors are twenty five point thirty three millimeters meters and I went and measured the shroud of the shrouded header that they have to fit into that's 25.55 so in these things which fit fine there's two tenths of a millimeter uh, spread between the two sides uh, um, and when I went and looked at the data sheet for the uh, 1210 one it looked bigger than that in particular it was at 25.4 plus a half a millimeter. Uh, um, so I sent I sent the measurement off to them. I said, you know, if you haven't bought it, please wait. It's all messed up. Uh, um, and and they were checking as well. They were saying yes, the part size is 2.54 millimeters, a tenth of an inch times 10 plus five half a millimeter, and the board is only and and they sent me pictures. It was really great. Uh, uh, so you know, here's the picture of my PD board, which in fact I can see how they've panelized it up to make a bunch of them all at once, which I hadn't seen before. That was cool. Uh, they take a measurement. The board is 25.44 millimeters long, uh, um, and the uh, the part is, you know, 10 times 2.54 plus a half won't fit. <sighs> and so, you know, yes, so again, we crossed in the mail talking about this, what to do. And at this point, I was like, you know, uh, uh, you know, and this is the crazy thing. I had uh, uh, plugged ends. See, look at these. Uh, uh, these things are the, the plugged pins. And yet the part I have, 25.34 millimeter. These things work fine in the shrouds. But if it's 25.4 or up, it's not going to fit. 
So I broke down. Uh, I'm out of time, so I'm going to skip this part. They also said, you know, forget about, you know, maybe don't use the plug pins. No. How about... Let's use the, uh, let's go with the expensive part. Let's go with solids. Uh, uh, however, they don't have enough anymore. Uh, while I dithered around and tried to save money, it went from over 900 to under 900. So the long and short of it is, is we are doing a reduced order. Uh, uh, they're going to do seven, 25 panels, uh, uh, which is 600, I believe. Uh, oh, no, 750 parts instead of the 950. And we're going to have to wait for the stock to come in to do the rest. Uh, uh, so I paid the extra difference for the Y pay less for its lens connector, which I could have had ages ago. And in fact, they went and bought them immediately. <laughs> so I went back to DigiKey. Time is up. Uh, uh, and the DigiKey says they get them end of May. I checked back again today. Now they're saying in June, we shall see. At a time. The next update will be out a week from today. Join in the chat room if you can, that would be great. In any event, I'm happy that you're here. I'll see you next week.